Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to come to hear the good word of God. <coughs> I pray, <coughs> excuse me, that all our hearts are open to receive the good word of God. And I thank you, Father, for the anointing and the presence of your Holy Spirit going forth that every word is weighty, that it hits the mark. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been talking about in the last two sessions, um, the importance of strengthening our heart, um, in, enduring. Last week, we talked about praying and praising, how that's super important of connecting the two in our walk with the Lord. We're going to talk more again about our hearts and going forward, the posture that we are not only with the Lord, but with people as well. So we're going to start out with Hosea 10, verse 12, and it says, sow to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up the fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rain righteousness upon you. Let's kind of take this scripture and talk about breaking up the fallow ground. Follow, F-A-L-L-O-W, means unproductive. It doesn't produce anything. It's hard. It's kind of like the ground outside right now, the winter ground. And the, and the farmers come in the spring and they break it up with their plows, right, in order to receive the good word of God. If there's any hardness in any areas of our life, it's going to be very difficult to hear the word of the Lord even if it's coming through somebody else, because we, we get thick skinned, we get hard in those areas of our life, and we don't allow the truth of God's word coming into our life. Let's look at some um, indicators of how, of, of what follow ground looks like. We're not going to dwell here, but we're in a time where the father is got his thumb on, on our hearts of the faithful church, the true church, the body of Christ. He's dealing with our hearts because he, the Lord is coming. Our bridegroom is coming and he wants to make sure there's little or none hay, wood or stay, uh, uh, stubble that we're presenting as a gift to our bridegroom. He wants that gold, silver and precious jewels. And I think we do too. So we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to break up any hard areas in our life, um, any pride, any um, arrogance, any entitlement where we feel that, you know, we're entitled um, to feel the way we are because of the injustices done to us. Um, God saying, well, I took upon that. Uh, Jesus took upon all that on the cross for you. No, you, you don't have a right to hold uh, offenses or unforgiveness toward anyone, regardless of what they've done to you. If there's a spirit of criticism operating in your life that you look and you just look at the weakness and, and low standards of other people rather than the God in them, then it produces a spirit of criticism. You're always looking for that 10% instead of the 90. If you're indifferent, uh, uh, passive, have apathy, you, don't, you just don't care. That's an indicator of hard ground in your heart as well. Of course, unforgiveness and offenses. You avoid people. Um, you talk about people, you, you know, you don't have anything nice to say about people. Um, fear, uh, fear prevents you from uh, operating in the love of God toward people. We're going to talk all about this, but I want you to, to look in your own heart right now and say, man, is any of that in me? And let's be truthful and transparent and judge ourselves, examine ourselves while we yet can. Because if we don't do it now here in the flesh, it will be judged, but face to face with Jesus. And you don't want to wait till then. You want to judge yourself now, repent, and ask for the, the cleansing forgiveness of the blood of Jesus to eradicate it from your life. All these things will prevent you from hearing and perceiving the, the beautiful um, voice of the Holy Spirit. If you keep things, hide things, you're going to, and not face it head on, you'll keep it. 
and it will navigate with you in your progression with the Lord. I don't know about you. I just want to get rid of all that stuff. And it's very humbling to do. It is. But when you do, the freedom that comes to you is incredible. And God wants us all to walk in that freedom. Whom the sun sets free, what? Is free indeed. So praise the Lord. So we're talking about how we can guard our heart, how we can rend our heart to the Lord and allow him to uh, do what he needs to do in our heart so that we're walking in the victory of God, not allowing these um, little foxes, the old nature, um, the flesh navigate us forward in our journey with the Lord. Amen. So let's turn, let's turn to Luke 18. Love, love, love the scripture. Luke 18, we are going to see the mission statement of Jesus. His job description, so to speak, his purpose and plan um, that God had for him. I'm sorry, did I say Luke 4? I did, right? Hopefully I did. Luke 4, 18. Okay, here it is. Jesus speaking. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. You might as well just say these words for yourself. You're anointed. The spirit of God is in you. And the spirit of God is upon you to help other people in the body of Christ in the world. And he says to preach. We're all able ministers of the gospel. I'm going to just put all this in, in this in these scriptures. You are an able minister of the gospel if you're born again. To preach the gospel to the poor. Those who haven't heard it. They're poor in spirit. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Wow. We are called to be bridgers up to the brokenhearted. If somebody's brokenhearted right now, we're to stand in that gap and bring them to Jesus, help them overcome um, in, in, in feeling like a victim or in pity. We're to, to raise them up so that they're uh, standing strong in the Lord uh, to proclaim liberty. That's freedom, freedom in the Lord to the captives, those who are bound in Satan's chains to recover sight to the blind so they can see clearly the truth and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, oppressed of the enemy, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus did proclaim, I am here and now I'm God upon the earth and I've come to set you free from the bounds of the enemy. And it is now present tense. That was 2,000 years ago. And he's alive and well. Jesus is alive and well. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. If you are hearing this recording and you're not born again, let me just say this. There are many religions out there. I was talking to a guy uh, recently that said, I'm looking at Hindu and Buddha and the Mormons and the Jehovah Witnesses and all these religions. And I'm, I'm, I, I want to look at them and then to decide and then decide what I want to pursue. And I said to him, so you're going to spend your, your energy and error instead of spending all your time on the absolute truth. He looked at me and, and got up and left. <laughs> Seriously. But listen, let's spend all our energy on the absolute truth. All these religions talk about Jesus. Uh, Islam, he's in the Quran. He's a good prophet. They all talk about Jesus, but Jesus is the only one out of all their gods that said, I am the one true God. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father, but through me. God's the only one that Jesus is the only one who declared, I am the one and only God. Don't spend your time on all these other religions that have a form of godliness. I'm it. So pursue me. I'm the absolute truth. And, and we know that that's when you call upon the name of Jesus, thou shalt be saved. Believe on him. And confess him as King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and he'll come in your spirit. Believe that he 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 uh, came to Earth as a God, as God, um, the only one true God that could totally forgive everyone of all their sins. Uh, was laid on the cross, forgave us of all our sins, shed his perfect 
blameless, precious blood for each and every uh, person who's ever been born on the earth, whosoever, if you're a whosoever, you qualify. And um, resurrected on the third day, Jesus is alive. He's alive. And he is alive in us for those of us who believed on him and accepted him into our heart. Amen. So important that we are uh, ministers of this gospel because everyone needs to get born again, their spirit alive unto God so that you can live from that, that absolute truth. So he, he is the one who showed us the way to live out and posture our hearts and to guard it in a very evil fallen world. We've got to guard our heart against the enemy who is the enemy of our soul and our, and our hearts. Amen. So in Philippians chapter four, let's go there. Such a great book. Philippians chapter four. I, I want you to see that you can't be passive about these things. We have to understand that we are partakers. We're joint heirs with Jesus. He is the great high priest, the great intercessor sitting at the right hand of the Father. But he invites us in to be a partaker with him. And let's look in verse 6 of chapter 4 of Philippians. Be, you be anxious for nothing. You be troubled for nothing. You be fearful for nothing. This is a command. It's not really negotiable. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Who's going to do that? Me. I, I'm not putting that burden on you. I, you could ask me to help you and pray with you. That's great. That's part of the body of Christ working together. But we have a responsibility to come before our heavenly father and let him know our heart. And remember, it says in, in all things, when I'm in a trial of tribulation, I'm not thanking God for it. I'm thanking him in it because I know he's going to bring me through it. And I'm going to be a stronger, uh, I have a stronger tenacity and character of God because I'm trusting in my father, bring me through it and teach me some things along the way so I can represent Jesus better. Look at verse seven. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. God wants your heart to be guarded. You, he, he wants you to guard your heart. There's a uh, responsibility that we all have to do this. In Proverbs 14, 30, it says, a sound heart is life to the body. What does sound mean? It means wholesome, proper, good, delivered, you know, just well. Our hearts affect our physical body. John 3, John, 1 John 3 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your heart prospers, is well, is doing well. There is a heart and body connection. Let's don't dismiss that. All right. How is it going with your soul? Is it well? Is your soul well? Whatever we tolerate in the soulish part of our lives, it will affect our body, our physical well-being. We've got to do a checkup in our hearts, our soulish realm, and see how that's doing from time to time. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. And we're going to look, this is such a good chapter, chapter four, verse 20, my son, my daughter, give attention to my words. Stay in the word every day. Incline your ear to my sayings. Listen, be open to hear the Holy Spirit and what he's speaking to your heart. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health 
to all your flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring or come forth the issues of your life. Glory to God. I need the Holy Spirit to do that. I can't do it by myself, but I invite the Holy Spirit to walk alongside me to help me uh, understand the issues of my heart, where it's at and what is going on. So this is a key to health. It's a key to healthy relationships. And, you know, we've all heard this. What is the key to healthy relationships? And is from one to 10, communicate, 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 repent. Communicate, 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 repent. Communicate, repent, communicate, repent. That's keeping a humble heart, right? And talking, don't stuff, don't pretend, don't put things under the rug. Talk about things. Most people don't talk about things because they're fearful. They're afraid. They're afraid to be hurt. They're afraid to um, that uh, people will see their own weaknesses, their own fears in their own heart. They don't want that because pride is there. No, let's let's let humility. Let's be willing to uh, to align ourselves up with with what God's word says and the person of the word, that living life of Jesus Christ. Let's humble ourselves and allow that to happen, even in our horizontal relationships with one another. Amen. Um, I talked about that 90-20. Somebody had mentioned that to me recently. Um, it's human nature for us to look at the 10%, um, the lack, the not living up to our standard, not fulfilling our expectation in other people. You know, we as believers, we tend to judge because after all, they're spiritual. They should know better. Well, even the best of the best have flesh. Hallelujah. And we're to be kind not only to our to other people, but we're to be kind to ourselves. When we mess up and, and flub up and we wonder where did that come from? You know, we're flesh and we're, we're attaining unto perfection. That maturing in all of our lives uh, is, a, is a present tense progressive thing. And we've got to be kind to ourselves as well. And in doing that, we'll be kind to other people. Amen. So don't dwell on the 10%. Look at the 90. You know, God the Father looks at the 100%. We're wall to wall Jesus. We've been totally covered with the blood of Jesus. Our Past, present, and future sins have been totally dealt with. We've been judged by the blood of Jesus, and we stand righteous before the Father right now, present tense. Now, we may sin, and we need to repent of that on an ongoing, on an ongoing thing in our life. That's from us upward. But from Father down, we're covered by the blood. He sees Jesus. I'm so thankful for that. <laughs> Aren't you? Let's take on that with each other. Let's look for Jesus and everyone. Let's look for the best. Let's think about all those things that we loved from the very beginning and embrace that and go forward with that kind of perspective. I think it's a Holy Spirit perspective, right? We're called to edify. We're called to build up and comfort one another to help each other grow up in Christ. And again, that's a present progressive uh, journey for each and every one of us. So when we don't, we're really, it's really a fear issue. We don't want um, people to see our weaknesses and we clam up like a shell. We build high walls, you know, that are, that people can't penetrate. No, we're, we're building walls that people, even the truth can't penetrate. Even God's word can't penetrate because we build this fortress. Let it crumble. What do you have to lose but more of, the, more of Jesus, more of transparency? People love that anyway. Um, <clears throat> guarding your heart means keeping it pliable before the Lord, trusting him to work all things together for his good and for your good. That means being humble and allowing the Holy Spirit to show you where you may need correction you may need a new alignment. God wants to bring you up in a level of excellence 
um, always progressing in the Lord, always growing up. And it's important that we maintain a spirit of unity, not uh, with one another in that, because God built the body of Christ for us to engage in each other's life, to see where, where, where we need to help one another. When we do that, he says, there is the commanded blessing. I want that commanded blessing on my life. How about you? Where can we agree to disagree? Where can we come back to the base of the cross where we realized for the first time that we truly were forgiven? Where did we learn that gush of unconditional love from the Father? Let's come back to that. Let's come back to that moment where we realized we were truly forgiven and truly loved by the Father. And let's live from that place. Let that be resurrected, our first love. You know, Samuel came to Saul when he did not obey the Lord. And he said, when you were little in your eyes, and now you've become this king and you've gotten big in your eyes. There's been an entitlement that you can get away with things, that you can do this and do that. See, when we get to that place, we kind of get thick skinned and we think we're just all that. We're not pliable where the Lord can really work in our hearts and our life. In Luke 17, 1, it says, it is impossible that no offenses shall come. These are injustices, heartaches, um, things done unjustly to us that just aren't right. God said, it's impossible to live in this earth that those offenses are not going to come. But there's a difference between when offense comes to us and we taking that offense. We can understand that. If God said offenses are going to come, you're going to be hurt. Injustices are going to be done to you. It's going to come. But we don't have to take the offense of it. So there's a big difference. Circumstances will happen in our life. God is looking, how are you going to respond to that? This is where we get to choose. If the life of God, the issues of life from our heart are going to flow from the, from the um, love that's been shed brought in our heart that Jesus placed in us, are we going to respond from that position? Or are we going to respond from the old man and or the flesh in that particular situation? We need to learn to deal with things of the heart properly. Let's turn to Matthew 24 and find out how to do that. Amen. Matthew 24, Jesus is talking about the things that are evident in the world in the last days. And we are truly, truly living in the end of the age. And he is saying, Take heed that no one de deceives you. And then he talks about deception four times. Plague once, uh, pestilence once, er earthquake once. We're seeing all of that happening all at the same time, but deception four times. And let's look at verse 10. And then many will be offended, will, be will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, or don't we see that happening, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures, there's the word, to the end shall be saved. He who endures to the end shall be saved. In, in specifically in this contents, Jesus is saying, he who endures the temptation to be offended. Look at verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. In order to be a strong messenger of the gospel in these end days, you're going to have to come 
against offenses in your life. You want to be strong. You want to make sure that we are submitting our hearts to the Lord and allowing him to heal us because he's working all things together for good for our sake. Amen. Turn to second Timothy chapter three. And again, let's understand that the times and seasons that we're living in, not to dwell on it, but to have an understanding of it. So you know how to respond when things happen, that you're not caught off guard and thrown in uh, out of the ring, so to speak, that you can't operate. But know this, that in the last day, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, which is prideful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Boy, that's a big one right there. See, you can't, you can't be unthankful. A, a grateful, thankful heart doesn't have expectations. See, when you can get to the place where you don't have expectations about someone else, then you're not going to get offended. You just live from a, a thankful heart. I'm, you're thankful for the 90%. You're thankful for the good. You're thankful for the blessing. You're thankful for every good thing in them. When you get to that point, and sometimes that's a progress to get there. When you get there, you can live from a grateful heart. So, but unthankfulness is, is now in this time, unholiness, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, people gossiping, um, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power. From such people, turn away. Now, we can look at this and say, I was unloving last week. I, I wasn't thankful about this. You might have moments of this that that flesh is, is rising to the surface and you realize it and you repent and the blood of Jesus cleanses you. This, this, is, a good, this is a good progress. It's, you're realizing these things are still in the old man. They're rising to the, to the surface. You know, you've been made new, by the way, but there's... Listen, we're all in present progressive. We're all going forward, maturing in the things of God. And some of those things float to the surface. You deal with them immediately. Repent and deal with them. Get them washed away by the blood of the lamb. Amen. But there are people uh, that are not of the Lord. And you're going to bump up against them. And they're going to bring offense to your life. And <clears throat> God says, uh, in verse seven, they're always learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They resist the truth. They're men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith. The, but their progress, um, but they will progress no further, and their folly will be manifest to all. But you, speaking to you and me, you have carefully followed my doctrine manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and perseverance. Glory to God. Yes, you have. Persecutions and afflictions which have happened to me in Antioch. What perse persecutions I endured. And out of them all, the Lord has delivered me. Glory to God. See, that's our mindset. Many of the trials and tribulations of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. Keep your heart in the posture looking vertical unto God, unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You know, in Zechariah 13, 7, 6, it says, those which I was wounded came from the house of my friends. My neighbors who I don't know, they could yell up, slanderous things to me and it wouldn't mean anything it wouldn't touch my heart they don't know me they haven't done life with me it's the ones nearest and dearest in your sphere of influence that can really pierce your heart amen let's let's be honest so all the more reason that we my mom used to say we treat family like guests and guests like family 
always being the same, no matter who you're around. You know, we tend in, in a, a natural way to put on a good front for people that we want to impress and have a good, um, impre- give a leave, leave a good impression with. And then with those who are around family, we let the flesh come to the surface and we treat them differently. If that is in you, and you're recognizing that right now, the Lord is wanting you to come up higher, come out of that and come in to his place of being, representing Jesus with your family and with people that you want to impress with guests, with new people. Work on that. You know, work on being the same. Representing Jesus well, no matter who you're with. Amen. Let that sink. Let's turn to Hebrews 12. That's being real. That's not being hypocritical. It's not living a, a, a two, a, a, like a two different people life. It's very hard to, to live a life like that. Just, just be real with everybody. Be loving with everybody. Treat everybody the way you want to be treated and work on that. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Hebrews 12, right? Let's look at verse 12. Hebrews 12, 12. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down in the feeble knees. You, I'm putting the, pro, the pronoun in, this, in these scriptures. You make straight the paths for your feet. So that which is lame may not be dislocated or dislodged, but rather be healed. See that what God wants for us is our hearts to be healed. He doesn't want us to live in a place of brokenness, a place of loss, a place of sorrow, a place of pity, where we're not um, being victorious every day. We're, we're, we're nursing the victim mentality. Look what happened to me. You know, look at my loss. Look at my brokenness. You know, it, everything is common unto man. What's happened to you has happened to somebody else, probably not far from you. It's just packaged different. We live in a fallen world. We're looking unto Jesus for that time to come where all this will be laid down and finished. But right now we're still in the flesh. We're still living in a fallen, even world. And offenses will come, brokenness, brokenheartedness, things will come. But how what God's doing in our heart is helping us how to respond and get the victory every single time. And that's really what we want, right? Amen. So it's not what happens to us. It's how we respond to what happens to us. We don't want our hearts to harden or become bitter. Uh, we've got to allow the Lord to heal our hearts where we're at. And we choose to be victim or victim or victorious. That is our choice. So I'm not making light, by, by the way, of anyone's pain. Please know that. But I've said this in the past. Don't pitch a tent and, and build a campfire and sit and let the smoke get on you. Don't do that. Um, keep moving. Keep moving forward in the things of God and keep moving with the people that God has put in your heart to help you in your journey. There's nothing, you know, that, that kind of thing in the long run, if you stay there, it'll produce bitterness. You'll get bitter at God. You'll get bitter at people. You'll get bitter. Uh, your whole focus will be the pain that you're dealing with. And it will produce a bitterness. And there's nothing pleasant about being around bitter people. They vomit on you. They vomit on you and, up, and upon whomever they're in contact with. And they're trapped like in this time warp where um, they dwell on their pain and the memory of their pain. What we have to do, family, is surrender that pain to the Lord and allow the Lord to heal us in those areas of our loss. We've got to do that in order to uh, get up and out of it. God wants us to, you're always going to have the memory of things in your life, but God doesn't want you to have the sting of the pain of it. 
and he is the one who heals that pain. So ask him to do that. Oh, he will do it so quickly. You know, we can look in the Bible and see two particular people, Naomi in the book of Ruth. Um, her husband took her to a land where he died and her two sons. And it was super important in those days and uh, where the men took care of the women. And now she had no one but her daughter in laws two of them. And one left and one said, "I where you go, I will go. Um, where you die, I will die. I will not leave you. And what a perfect picture of agape love. And uh, of course, we know the story. But when Naomi went back to um, Israel, she said, don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me, I think it's Maka or starts with an M, which means bitterness. So she became bitter of heart. But now we look at Job. And we look at all the things that happened to Job. He lost his family completely. He lost all his possessions. He himself, his body was inflicted. And he sat there and, and he did not allow his heart um, to become embittered toward God. He stood his ground. Um, God is a good God. Job bowed in worship. Naomi withdrew in bitterness. Let's look at these two people and say, where in my life am I allowing? What am I doing? Am I worshiping the Lord through this? Or am I allowing bitterness to take root? Bitterness will not only trouble your soul and prevent your purpose in, in um, the purpose that God placed on your heart to be fulfilled in your, in your intimacy with the Lord, but it does affect other people. It, that vomit gets off on anybody, everybody else. It affects them. People don't want to be around that. They got their own lives to work with. I like I'm a 24 hour job. I'm working to guard my heart, and I don't, and you don't want to be around people that are constantly attacking that. And it's hard. It's just hard to be around people like that. So let's take stock of our life and say, I don't want, I don't want that. I don't want to be that. I want the Lord to heal my heart so I can walk in the freedom and the joy of the Lord. Amen. Um, bitter people have a very hard time having relationships with other people. So wounded people, wound people. We've all heard hurt people, hurt people. Let's get up and out of that. If there's any area of our lives that we're dealing with, get bow in worship and say, Lord, have your way in my heart. Let's go back to Hebrews 12 if you're looking there. We have to let that healing to happen. That's our responsibility. It's on you and me. Let the Lord heal your heart. You will have the memory, but not the pain. God takes it. We know that. If we've had a baby, <laughs> you remember how it hurt. It was a hurtful process, but you don't have the pain of it. And so much so, as soon as you have the baby, you want to get pregnant again to have another one. There's so much joy in the end result. Let's let that be our perspective. Lord, you're bringing me up and out of this brokenness, of this loss, of this pain. I want to live in the freedom of victory. Amen. So God wants us to get get to that place of sweet communion with him and in realizing that that place affects our relationship with the Lord vertically and horizontally with other people. So how do we know whether our heart is healed or not? Um, it's your relationships. How are you dealing with relationships? Do you avoid people? <clears throat> do you talk about the people who've hurt you? Do you slander them? Are you unloving toward them? Do you not bring them into your life? Are you not celebrating them in your walk with God? Um, yeah, it's so important that we, um, that we take time to evaluate all this in our life. Listen, you can't force reconciliation with anybody. You can only offer it, but you're, you're, your willingness to offer it is showing that you're allowing the Lord to break up that follow ground. And if relationships have been broken in the trust factor, and I do mean broken in trust factors, there's a time of a time that needs to be given 
to allow that trust to be healed. And if it's not reciprocated, you don't see that happening. You don't keep going in that direction to be hurt again. I make, I'm pretty making that clear. I hope I'm making that clear. You can email me or text me if you want further you know, discussion on that. But keep guarding your heart, but don't guard it to where you build walls and clam up. Allow the Lord to heal you. Remember Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Well, you may say they do know what they're doing and they're doing it deliberately. Jesus said, spiritually, if they knew what they were doing, they wouldn't do it. And they don't. Remember, our battle is not with flesh and blood. It's not with people. It's with principalities, powers of wickedness uh, that rule in high places. They influence the emotions of people and cause them to act and respond the way they do. Take authority over those spirits. You have the authority to do that. I'm telling you, it works. Prayer, taking your authority and praising God that he is doing it. It's a winning combination. Just be consistent in doing it until you see the God result. Don't back off. Don't think one prayer is a done and dunk. It's not. Just keep at it until you see the God results. Amen. First, Celeste, first Thessalonians, let's finish with this verse. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse eight. Where is it? Back here. Our last scripture. First, Celeste, First Thessalonians 5, oh goodness, um, 18. In everything, give thanks. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. I backed up to 16. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Not for it, in it. Because God is your deliverer. He is your victory. And as you keep your eyes on him, the author and finisher of your life, of every situation in progress, he's going to bring you through it. You will stand victorious. It's his promise in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Go and enjoy the presence of the Lord today because he's not only in you, he's with you. In Jesus' name, amen.